and it was really scary and like her whole side was bruised and her face was all bloody. Coming up on Chapman News, a bus crash sends students to the hospital. Why police say all 12 passengers are lucky to be alive. Leah Freeman has the latest just ahead. Plus, questions still surround the death of a man found outside a Westminster home that was being fumigated. Was it a burglary gone wrong? And from a camping ban to a welcome mat, why the city of Anaheim changed its policy on the issue of homelessness. Chapman News starts right now. Happy Friday and welcome to Chapman News. I'm Alex Biston. And I'm Maritza Viela. Thanks for joining us today. We begin our newscast with some breaking news out of Long Beach. A Metro Blue Line train has collided with a car at Long Beach Boulevard and 14th Street. Mitch Eby is live at the scene with more information. Mitch. Thanks, Maritza. Yeah, here in Long Beach at 7 a.m. this morning, a Metro Rail train collided with a car at the corner of Long Beach Boulevard and 14th Street. Now, I spoke with Marlene Arona of the Long Beach Police Department, who said a black Lexus sedan was attempting to cross the train tracks, making an illegal left turn against the red light and a no left turn sign when it collided with the train. Emergency crews transported the driver to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Now, there were 12 passengers on the train as well, six of whom reported being in pain. All injuries were minor, and none of the passengers had to go to the hospital. Now, north, northbound Long Beach Boulevard was shut down at Anaheim Street for a period of time this morning, but everything was cleared up, and all streets were reopened by 9 a.m. Uh, live in Long Beach, I'm Mitch Eby. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Mitch. The driver will be cited for the vehicle code violations, according to Long Beach Police Department. Twelve people are lucky to be alive after a bus ride home takes an unexpected turn. Chapman News reporter Leah Freeman has been following this developing story. She joins us live from Anaheim Hills. Leah, what do we know at this point? Yeah, thanks, guys. Well, what we know is that for the past three and a half years, the bus driver has worked full time for the Orange Unified School District. And yesterday was just like any other day, a classic ride home from an after school activity. Crews work to clear an Anaheim Hills Road after a school bus crashed late Thursday, sending 12 to the hospital. Of the 11 students, five were transported, two in critical condition, and the driver was transported in critical condition. The accident happened just after 3.30 when the bus veered off the road, colliding into a pair of trees. With the driver unconscious, students on the bus had to think fast. A girl was screaming that another girl, her name's Resnik, that she was bleeding a lot, and it was really scary, and like her whole side was bruised, and her face was all bloody, and I was like, we need to get out of the bus. The cause of the crash remains unknown, but neighbors are having a hard time placing the blame. God, my kids could have been on there, you know. I mean, accidents happen, I know, but if it was a mechanical, then yeah, I'd be extremely upset about that. With an accident like this, people are reminded how important it is to take the necessary safety precautions when driving. There's a lot of things people can do proactively to prevent type, these types of collisions. In this particular case, though, uh, it's still too early to tell what actually caused it. This driver could have been doing everything correctly and, um, and just had something happen. CHP says it could take at least a month to figure out what went wrong here, and firefighters say that if the bus hadn't hit the tree, it could have been a much more serious situation. Reporting from Anaheim Hills, Leah Freeman, Chapman News. Back to you guys. Thanks, Leah. As of this morning, two students and the driver still remain in the hospital. As for the investigation, the bus will be inspected within the next week. California Highway Patrol is in the midst of investigating a deadly crash that happened earlier yesterday morning in Irvine. Christina Hasanoral has more. A five-car accident left two dead and three injured early yesterday morning. Around 4.30 a.m., a red Mitsubishi crashed into the center divider on the 5 freeway near Jamboree in Irvine. The driver reported the incident, but when CHP arrived, they found the accident had instigated two more collisions. One of the people hit was actually a good Samaritan who had stopped near the scene of the first crash to call for help. Silver Acura stopped to assist that red Mitsubishi. 
soon after a, a gray to Toyota Camry that was traveling in the carpool lane collided with the uh, Acura and the Mitsubishi. After the second crash, the Toyota drifted into traffic and was hit by two vehicles in succession, killing both the driver and passenger. The lead investigator believes it was three separate crashes, so at this time we are going to investigate as three separate crashes. The injured sustained both major and minor injuries and are being treated at Western Medical Center. In Irvine, Christina Hosnoral, Chapman News. The two killed were a man and a woman from Rancho Santa Margarita. CHP has not yet released their names. After a home is tented, you'd expect to find hundreds of dead critters, but one Orange County exterminator got quite the surprise when instead of finding dead bugs, he found a dead body. Allie Friedman has more on this discovery. A man was found dead on the back porch of this Westminster home, which was at the time under fumigation. Police say the body was found Tuesday evening at around 6 p.m. by an employee of the fumigation company who was coming to remove the protective wrapping from the house. It was at this point when he noticed the body and immediately called Westminster Police. But despite such warning signs like these, which are placed on the homes by fumigation companies, warning people about how toxic the chemicals inside are, this does not stop people from breaking and entering, and police say this is not uncommon. These houses can be easy marks. Uh, they know there's just nobody home. Um, well, there's not likely anybody that's going to walk up in onto them since it is a attended house and there's poison. In fact, it is so common that people have posted videos like this one on YouTube showing home break-ins during the fumigation process. This Westminster home did not have surveillance, but luckily for the homeowners, the mystery man never made it inside. He had a slim chance of survival without the proper breathing equipment that exterminators use for their own safety. I spoke with Darren Trask, a local fumigation expert, about how lethal these chemicals really are. Any, anything that's living that has a metabolism is toxic. Well, so for people and mammals with a high metabolism, you die immediately. Police are saying that the cause of death is likely to be from poisoning, but the Orange County Coroner's Office is still investigating the exact cause. Police can confirm, however, that the man is not related to the homeowners or the fumigation company. Reporting from Westminster, I'm Allie Friedman, Chapman News. We learned that that home, homeowner was actually planning to move out before this ever happened. He says he was tenting the house to get it ready for people who were planning to move in after him. A Texas man is dead after an emergency on board a flight to Orange County's John Wayne Airport. John Selner from Fort Worth, Texas had a medical issue aboard American Airlines Flight 2249 on Tuesday. The flight crew performed CPR, but Selner couldn't be revived. The cause of his death is still uncertain. OC Fire Authority Sheriff's Department and airport operations helped move the passenger from the aircraft to a secure area and the terminal. The Orange County's Sheriff Department coroner pronounced him dead at 11.46 a.m. I was just working the back room and all of a sudden I heard a medical emergency and all of a sudden I just heard about uh, the passing of a gentleman. Oftentimes people come to airports or are on a flight and they have shortness of breath, maybe they have nerves, maybe they have other medical conditions and so you know there's a lot of uh, emergency responders that are available to assist them and most of the time people make it out okay. Marcus Carroll also says he saw Selner's wife waiting for him at the airport and that they were supposed to be on a vacation. Selner was 90, 79 years old. A 13-year-old middle school student in Garden Grove has been arrested after police say he brought a handgun to school. Officers were sent to Jordan Intermediate School around 9.40 a.m. on Monday. They say that the gun, uh, as actually pictured here, was not loaded, but he did have ammunition in his front pocket. The student was arrested and booked into the Orange County Juvenile Hall on weapon charges. Police are still investigating why he brought the gun on campus. They say the gun was registered, but they also found an unregistered rifle. Orange County has one question for its residents this weekend. Got drugs? The U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration and the Orange County Sheriff Department are teaming up to host events all throughout Orange County to teach people how to properly dispose of unwanted prescription drugs. Residents can bring any unwanted drugs to help reduce prescription abuse in the future. Over seven tons of unwanted drugs have been collected since 2011. National Prescription Drug Take Back Day 
will take place on April 26 from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. The Sheriff's Department asks everyone to go online to DEA.gov to find a drop-off location mm -hmm. near you. Anaheim officials confirmed Tuesday that they are working towards building a year-round emergency homeless shelter. The shelter could potentially rescue 350 people a night from sleeping on the streets. The announcement comes five months after the city banned the homeless population from pitching tents in public places. While city officials have been working with Anaheim PD and nonprofit organizations to establish assistance programs, building a shelter would be a game changer for the homeless community. And it also breaks that cycle of homelessness, so their children aren't going to be in that, you know, habit of possibly drug abuse and alcohol abuse, that they're going to, you know, live good lives, go to school, get a job, and do great. While nothing is finalized yet, Anaheim and Fullerton officials are working to bring the shelter to a vacant lot just south of the 91 freeway next to the Harbor Boulevard, Carl's Jr. The property was purchased this month for $3 million. The homeless shelter will be operated by Orange County if approved by early summer. Orange County utility users may see an increase in their bills over the next decade but not if consumer watchdog groups have anything to say about it. A proposed settlement for the already closed San Onofre nuclear plant could cost utility users in South Orange County and San Diego over $3.3 billion. But consumer groups believe that ratepayers have the right to pay a reasonable rate and the current proposal is beyond a fair amount. Consumer objections will be heard and could go into effect as early as this June. Coming up after the break, Cal State Fullerton was transformed into a sea of cardboard boxes last night. Find out why just ahead. Plus, we'll find out how the weekend weather is looking. April, what do you got for us? We're looking at unexpected change in weather this weekend. I'll let you know why you may need to pull out those rain boots. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Chapman News, Orange County's news leader. Tribeca, right next to the narrow, but I'll be hood forever. I'm the new Sinatra, and since I made it here, I can make it anywhere. Yeah, they love me everywhere. I used to cop in Harlem, all of my Dominicanos right there up on Broadway. Pull me back to that McDonald's, took it to my stash spot, 560 State Street. Catch me in the kitchen like a Simmons whipping pastry. Cruising down A Street, off white Lexus, driving so slow, but BK is from Texas. Me, I'm out that bed stop, home of that boy Biggie. Now I live on Billboard. And I brought my boys with me, say what up to Tata, still sipping my ties, sitting courtside, Knicks and Nets give me high five, I'll be spiked out, I could trip I'm Harry Smith. I'm Michael Seard. My name's John Duber. My name is Anthony Filiach. And you're watching. And you're watching. You're watching. And you're watching Chappin' News. Welcome back. Cardboard boxes, cup of noodles, and comedy. These three things and more were at one of Cal State Fullerton's newest events, Box City. The students at Cal State Fullerton held the Box City event to raise awareness for the homeless by sleeping in cardboard boxes overnight. There were different activities to participate in like food, games, and even some live entertainment. The students were excited to make an impact on the Orange County community. I'm just trying to do something to help people. It's not enough to just acknowledge that there's a problem. I mean, if you're being inactive, it's the same as just being ignorant to an issue. See that we're actually out here and advocating for homelessness and actually trying to see what it's like 
although it won't be exactly what it's like for a homeless person, we're actually trying to put ourselves in the shoes of a homeless person. So this event means a lot to not only me, but my cohort and um, the Master's of Social Work program here at Cal State Fullerton. And we just wanted to raise awareness and then provide some food and clothes for homeless families out here in Orange County. The students linked up with the organization Family Promise of Orange County to host this event. The students have set a goal to raise $10,000 by the end of the semester, which will go towards helping the homeless in Orange County. Well, Alex, these past few weekends have been so sunny, like perfect beach weather. I know. I'm really, really hoping to go to the beach this weekend. I think it would be so fun. April, please tell me there's going to be some beach weather. Ladies, I would love to tell you that we could all take a Chapman News Beach trip, but that is just not the case this weekend. Right now, coming in from the northwest, we have a storm system, which is not typical for this time of the year. This, you know, we're in the spring season, and we have some rain, mountain snow moving throughout the state early on today, throughout the day, and into Saturday. Um, as you can see in the northwest region, we have uh, snow in parts of the Sierra Nevada, uh, 5 to 15 inches in some areas, even hitting uh, Yosemite National Park. You know, it's not typical for this time of year. We've had a dry winter season. Tahoe City has received only 55 inches of snow since July, which is 125 inches below the average. So it's kind of good we're getting this rain uh, this late in, but it's definitely not typical for this time of year. Let's take a look at those southwest temps. So currently, as you can see, in the south, we have really warm weather uh, in Phoenix, mid-70s. And then as you head towards our neck of the woods from San Diego to Los Angeles, Orange County, mid-60s. But then as you head northwest, where that storm system is moving through right now in the Sierra Nevada, uh, mid-50s and even in Reno, low 40s. So wide range of temperatures all throughout Southern California today. Um, so let's take a look at the hourly temperatures in Orange. So we have a high of 70, which we're going to hit an hour or two from now, but starting at 5 p.m. and then moving late into the night, partly cloudy all the way to some rain, which starts at 10 p.m., uh, mid-60s to low, uh, upper, upper and low 50s. Uh, and let's take a look at the five-day forecast. So we have some rain we're looking at on Saturday, and then as we move further into the weekend on Sunday, low 70s, mid 50s, and then as we head into Monday and Tuesday of ne next week, it's going to be in the upper, uh, mid and upper 80s and 90s, and then jump back right into the 80s and 90s for the rest of the week. So we have that to look forward to. Also to look forward to, and for you stargazers out there, I'm sure it's already on your calendars, but Tuesday, April 29th is the solar eclipse. Now, unfortunately, only people in Australia and parts of Antarctica can see it. Um, but, you know, for those of you who want to stream it live on your uh, computer, you can do that as well. As you can see behind me, it's going to kind of look reddish yellow with a ring around the moon, which is why it's referred to as the ring of fire. Uh, so that's something to look forward to for those people. But for us in the United States, the next total solar eclipse isn't until August of 2017. So mark it down on your calendars for a few summers from now. Uh, but in October, there's going to be a total lunar eclipse. Um, so that's something that you can look forward to and put on for a date night or um, just to hang out with your friends. Thanks, April. I'll definitely be wearing my rain boots tomorrow. If you live in Los Angeles, say goodbye to, e to smoking e-cigarettes in public places. Although some people have claimed that electronic cigarettes have helped them quit smoking tobacco, this didn't stop the ban from being passed. The ban restricts the use of e-cigarettes from parks, bars, beaches, indoor workplaces, outdoor dining, and farmers markets. The LA City Council passed the ban on March 4th of this year, stating that e-cigarettes are just as potentially dangerous to your health. However, vaping will still be allowed in vaping lounges, certain stores, and during theatrical performances. This ban on e-cigarettes is being considered around the country and seems to be a national trend toward regula regulating the devices. Coming up next, lots of Chapman sports finish up their season this week. Leandra Romero takes the desk for this week's best campus sports show. What's up, Leandra? Coming up, women's lacrosse looks to win on senior night and get a bid for the Skyac playoffs. Plus, we got a couple of games on the diamond. Chapman baseball hoping to continue their hot streak as they play two against Skyac rival Whittier. And the softball team trying to make a late push for the tournament. We got all the highlights next on the Best Campus Sports Show.
Yeah. Yeah, I'm out at Brooklyn. Now I'm down in Tribeca, right next to the narrow. But I'll be hood forever. I'm the new Sinatra. And since I made it here, I can make it anywhere. Yeah, they love me everywhere. I used to cop in Harlem. All of my Dominican Connors right there up on Broadway. Pull me back to that McDonald's. Took it to my stash spot, 560 State Street. Catch me in the kitchen like a Simmons whipping pastry. Cruising down A Street, off white Lexus. Driving so slow, but BK is from Texas. Me, I'm out there, bed stop. Home of that boy. Biggie. Now I live on Billboard, and I brought my boys with me. Say what up to Tata, still sipping my ties. Sitting courtside, Nick's and Nets give me high five. I'll be spiked out, I can trip. I'm Harry Smith. Uh, I'm Michael Sear. Name's John Duber. My name is Anthony Filiach. And you're watching. And you're watching. You're watching. And you're watching Chappin' News. senior week for Chapman Athletics and with regular season coming to a close there was no shortage of excitement as teams were trying to keep their playoff hopes alive. I'm Leandra Romero and this is the best campus sports show. The women's lacrosse team has had an up and down year and coming into senior nights this past Saturday they had lost the previous three and had a below 500 record but with a win against the CMS Athenas the Panthers would lock down the number four spot and head into the Skyac playoffs. Let's head to the game. The Panthers commemorating their four graduating seniors, and it was also the Pink Ribbon game, raising breast cancer awareness. To the highlight we go, Panthers offense hot out of the gates within the first minute. Sophomore Kylie Moore scores easily, then not long after, Moore scores again after a nice assist by Catherine LaPlante. But it wasn't all offense, Chapman defense also making their presence felt, Kara Podesta making a nice save on the penalty shot. The Athenas would finally break through before the half when another penalty shot leads to a goal by Christina Sutherland. The score at halftime, Chapman 4, Claremont 1. Panthers came out firing in the second half. LaPlante added again. She scores while running across the middle. Then Allie Cotney goes over the top, scoring multiple defenders. And that would do it on this one. The score, Chapman 13, CMS 4. Chapman News met up with the team after the win on senior night. Yeah, I've got a four-year-old daughter of my own that was born when they were a uh, freshman. And uh, to see them all grow together, is, uh, it's pretty incredible. Just knowing that I have to leave this all behind is, is really hard because lacrosse is my life, but this program has done so much for me and I'm just, I just love everything about it. So it was a bittersweet feeling. And after a 13-9 win against these same Athenas in the first round of the Skyac tournament, the lacrosse team will face Pomona Pitzer in the semis tomorrow at 11 a.m. On the diamond, Chapman Baseball hosted Whittier College in an afternoon doubleheader Saturday. Chapman won the first game 10 to nothing, and we're looking to sweep the Poets with another win. It was a great day for baseball at Hart Park, the fans enjoying themselves, and so were the players. Right here showing off some dance moves, and why not when your team has won the past eight games. To the game we go, Chapman's pitching and defense were both solid. Chapman up by three in the eighth when Tabor Watson gets a ground ball back to him and catcher David Basin saves a run by making the nice swipe tap. Then to the top of the ninth, Braden Riddle comes on to close it out. He gets Armando Valdez to the ground and out. And that would do it. The final score, Chapman five, Whittier two. The Panthers win twice and they move to the top of the leaderboard in the Skyac. And it looks like that does it for me here at the Best Campus Sports Show. Up next is entertainment with Lauren Faree. Lauren, what can we expect? Thanks, Leandra. Move over Sundance, look out Tribeca, the Newport Beach Film Festival has arrived. Chapman News has an exclusive peek at the festival's 15 year anniversary. All of this and more coming up in entertainment. You are watching Chapman News, Orange County's news leader. Looking for these? You drive buzzed, it could be one very expensive ride. First, you gotta make bail. Then pay me to get your car back. Your insurance premiums will go through the roof. And my legal fees just keep adding up. All told, it could end up costing you $10,000. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving because buzz driving is drunk driving. So I got this new family and I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy all day long. Tap, 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 tap. 
Oh, and she even talks to it. She talks to that more than she talks to him. What's up, bro? Nice shirt. Who's she talking to? Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. The next 30 seconds can save you a lot of money. Just do your laundry in cold and stick to full loads. Auto-sleep your computers. Plug your gadgets in a power strip and switch it off when you're done. Head it out, turn back your thermostat by 10 degrees. And drive sensibly. The more energy you save, the more money you save. Find other great tips at energysaver.gov. Every day across America, excess food is gathered by a network of good people at local food banks, giving hope to millions of children who struggle with hunger. They've earned their wings, and you can too. Together, we can solve child hunger. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. Welcome back to Chapman News. Well, you know, Martha, I actually was so lucky last night to attend the Newport Beach Film Festival, and it was so much fun. And, Lauren, I know you've been to the Newport Beach Film Festival, right? You've been. Before. Yeah, I went last year, and I'm so bummed I missed this year because last night the big Newport Theater rolled out their red carpet for the opening night of the 15th annual Newport Beach Film Festival. And like Alex said, she headed out to talk to the festival's founder on their milestone year. This is our 15-year anniversary. It's amazing uh, to see the turnout. Wow, it's who would have thought? 53,000 people and 400 films, 50 countries. It's uh, pretty remarkable. The headlining film was Love Sick, starring my favorite friend, Matt LeBlanc. This year, was the festival will feature over 400 films during the week. Even our very own Chapman students have film screening for the OC public to enjoy. The festival will continue until next Thursday, May 1st, with John Favreau's film Chef closing the festival. Tickets are available online at NewportBeachFilmFest.com. There's no hiding the craziness that Indio has seen recently with the back-to-back -back weekends of Coachella. Well, saddle up desert dwellers because those polo fields are about to get real country. The 7th Annual Stagecoach Music Festival starts today and giddy-ups through the weekend. Headliners include Eric Church, Kenny Chesney, Luke Bryan, and Hunter Hayes. More than 120,000 cowboys and girls are anticipated to attend the weekend's country fest. All right, you guys, you've got some options for this weekend. You could go to the film festival or stagecoach. What, what's it going to be? What makes well, the cut? Well, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to attend stagecoach this weekend. You know, I actually am not either, but I'm really, really looking forward to getting a lot of sleep this week weekend. I know I really didn't get a lot of sleep this week, so Me it's going to be too. a great time. <laughs> Well, that's all we have for today. Thank you so much for joining us at Chapman News. Don't forget to log on to our website, chapmannews.tv, to see all of our episodes, Chapman Newsy bios, and top headlines. And make sure you also follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Chapman News, Twitter and Instagram at Chapman News, and YouTube at youtube.com slash Chapman News. I'm Alex Biston. And I'm Maritza Viella. Have a great weekend, Panthers. Thanks for joining us.